Today is Sunday, September 20th. It is sweater weather, prime knitting season, and I've done some knitting. Let's get to it. Hi, my name is Sonia and welcome to Kutopia, our very own knitting utopia. It's been quite a while since my last episode, but life happens. You don't always have the time or the energy for filming, but we're here now. I have so much to show you guys, so let's jump right to finish the objects. Summer was so hot. It was way too hot for me. It was way too hot to do any knitting. <laughs> the last episode that I filmed, uh, I think it was back in June, and I had such big, great plans for all the things that I was going to knit, but most of it just didn't happen. Nope. But I did knit something. And I'm gonna show you. Let's start with that one. I finished the Kamos pullover for my friend. And as you can see, she has already worn it quite a bit. And you know, that's the best, best kind of compliment you can get when you need something. Uh, so here it is. I'm really happy with this. I struggled to knit this because you know, mohair and merino pullover when it's 30 degrees celsius it's not ideal <laughs> but i did it i did it i did it uh, i finished this in the last possible hour because she was she was traveling and i wanted to give this to her before <laughs> before she went to her ways but i managed managed to do that Anyways, so this is Kamos Pullover, it's from um, Novita magazine, I can't remember which magazine, it, I think it was the spring issue this year. I'm gonna put all the information in the box down below, because I no longer have the magazine, <laughs> because um, my husband actually he spilled a full mug of coffee to this sweater and on the magazine <laughs> at the same the same day that I was supposed to give this for my friend. I was not pleased. The magazine is ruined, but uh, my husband was able to get the stain out of this one which was good for our marriage <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean <laughs> yeah um, this is knit out of um, Filkolana Arvetta and Ito silk mohair so the yarn was held double I used four millimeter needles it was knit bottom up um, and the sleeves were knitted separately and um, I had to sew them in which I normally never do because I'm not great at sewing and it gives me anxiety <laughs> but it worked out uh, well enough there's this accidental puff sleeve um, detail but I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out so it was not on purpose, but it looks good. So we're quite happy with that. And yeah, I can say with mm, quite quite great certainty that this has turned out well because she has been wearing wearing this almost all the time, and I just. I asked asked her to um, lend me this 
um, to film this episode. And I'm gonna, I need to give this back to her ASAP. But yeah, this, this is the one and only thing that I finished in the summer. But thank God, it's as beautiful as it is. Very happy. And this color is not my color, but it, it looks so great on her. And it goes well with her wardrobe. So, you know, this is why, <laughs> why we do this. This is why we do this thing. And this is why we gift our needs away. If you're that kind of nature, I am. So happy. <laughs> but okay, I, I've done something else as well. But yeah, since finishing the Camus Pullover, I've been quite busy with my knitting. I, uh, I, you know, Fall is the prime season for knitting, as I as I said previously, and I, I've been so inspired to knit all things possible. And uh, first thing that I did was this tiny little Oslo hat. I think I I mentioned uh, about knitting this Oslo hat beforehand. I'm I'm not sure. But yeah, I had some leftover sunness gone to merino wool, you know, merino wool yarn. I had just under 100 grams. And the smallest size from the Oslo hat pattern requires 100 grams. So I played yarn chicken and lost. But I think this is kind of... Cool. I, I really like this. I like this color combo. It is a bit Gryffindor, but we don't mind. <laughs> and I, I just think this sort of um maroon red and and mustard yellow go well together. And um adding this pom-pom on top on top of the hat really made the difference, you know, because without it it wasn't really working. It was too, too sudden, the change between the colors and uh, there wasn't enough, enough of the yellow. But adding the pom-pom brought it all together. Uh, I, I did everything according to the pattern, I think. I used 3.5 millimeter needle. I need the smallest size. I followed the measurements, so not not much to add in here. And I think the uh, finished hat is maybe it's good for a uh, eighteen months old or two year old child. Our our baby, our toddler. We no longer have baby. We have a toddler. Our toddler just turned one uh, in the summer, so this is too too big for them. And I'm I think I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give this to some other child. Child, yeah. I'm really struggling with with <laughs> filming today, as you can tell. But we're just gonna soldier. Through, and I'm not gonna wait two to three months before filming the next episode. So you know, we're gonna get there eventually. Just hang on tight. Yeah. Once again, I'm really happy. Uh, I I mentioned it in my very first episode um, that I really wanna make just neat things that I'm excited about. If I'm not feeling something, I'm, I'm not gonna finish it. I'm gonna uh, rip it off and do something else. Because my, my time and my resources are too valuable for me to do something that I'm not, I'm not feeling like 100%.
too. This is this is cute. I have kind of harsh light coming through there, but it means that the sun is shining in September, so we're not complaining at all. Yeah, this is Oslo hat number one <laughs> because I'm a pattern repeater, so naturally I did it twice. <laughs> this is Oslo hat uh, number two. This is for our toddler. Um, it's knitted with the same amount of stitches as the first one. Um, but I I did this bit, this bit, a bit shorter than the pattern suggests. You know what I mean? Uh, for this one, I used Walk Collection Merino wool. The colorway was um one of a kind. It, it was uh, for Liner magazine. They had this. Feel It Yarn Club a few years back with a um, yarn store called Pikitu here in Finland. And uh, so, yeah, this is a one of a kind of color that you can't get anymore. It has this pinks, and this is more of a brown. The color's not, not showing. Greatly here, but yeah, it's just it has all the fall colors that I love. And once again, I played yarn chicken, I had full skein of this, but it wasn't enough. This actually weighs 102 grams, so uh, I ended up, um, because um, this is neat, uh, yarn held. Double. Uh, I, when I got to the decreases, I just um, I took uh, I will pop it up up. How will I tell you this? <laughs> um, I held one uh, one strand of the merino, and then the second strand was drops barbel in this very plain mid gray because I thought I thought that it would it wouldn't show as much so you can sort of tell where the yarn switches but I don't think that you really can tell especially when this is on our toddler's hat, head and um, they're running around so yeah this is for this is for my my baby my toddler and yeah, I forgot to mention you mention you guys. This is also drops bubble. So when I realized that I'm gonna run out of this yarn, I just um, dug in <laughs> to my um, sock scraps, and I didn't have anything that came even close to this red one. So I thought that the more contrast, the better. Hence the yellow. So, uh, and um, this, uh, the first Oslo hat weighs 113 grams. So really 100 grams is not enough because of this bonbon takes like 5 grams. So yeah, just two very basic hats. I, I really like Oslo hat pattern. I think it's good. And especially now that I have done this, this small uh kid sizes um i'm i'm quite sure that i will be making this in the future as well for our kid because it's it's a simple pattern it's fun to knit and it looks great and it's wearable you know you can you can <laughs> it's not that big of a deal for an adult if it's not wearable, but with with children, you you can't help it. It it needs to be practical and wearable and comfortable. But yeah, two hats. Then I have two pairs of socks. First socks are here. These are Hieta socks. The pattern is from this 
gorgeous book called Urban Knit by Lenny Hoimela. I got this as a birth birthday present for myself and this is probably the most perfect uh, niche book that I have ever laid my eyes on. I'm gonna need every single last thing from this book at some point. Honestly, all of them are so great. I don't necessarily need the scarves, but even those were just gorgeous. And so I, I wanted to I wanted to need something out of this straight away. And um, I needed to knit some uh, socks for a birthday present. The birthday in question has come and gone already. <laughs> But better late than never. And here's the, here's the original Vieta stock. Just this quite quite simple cable stock. Um, I used to knit cables all the time. I love knitting cables, but I really I really hadn't done that in a in a while, and so so that's why I picked up this pattern first because. I wanted I wanted to get back on the cable train. <laughs> the yarn that I used is uh, Drops Nude Nord Nude. I just get it from my stash. I already had some some skeins of nude in there, and it's it's good, affordable, uh, nice feeling sock yarn. As I told you before, I'm not super excited about using drops, yarns, but since I already own quite a lot, of course I'm gonna need them. Need them. And the only here is actually drops alpaca, but we're not gonna talk about this in this episode. Stay tuned. But yeah, um, since uh, this yarn is a bit heavier than regular fingering. I think it's closer to a sport weight yarn. You can tell that um, this is quite quite a bit longer longer as than the original. But I think that this this look really nice. Let me just show you the cable. It shows better in here and yeah I'm really happy with this I have I have woven in the ends already but I haven't yet um, probably <laughs> properly finished this because I'm a lazy type of girl and I'm not sure when I'm gonna be able to keep this for the receiver. So if I don't have to do it now, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it right now. <laughs> the these socks took um, 86 grams of yarn, so I have I have small balls of scrap yarn left. I used 2.5 millimeter needles, and it was. Um, it was a really good knit. The pattern was well written. Um, I had to follow the cable pattern throughout the sock. I didn't. I couldn't memorize it at any point, but that might just be me. <laughs> but it was easy enough. I I could easily, you know, knit this and watch something easy from the TV, like RuPaul's Drag Race or something like that. Not heavy drama, but <laughs> but some some light entertainment goes well. Goes well with this. Yeah. And then these are also gift gift socks. Uh, I once again need some Rose City rollers. And these are really, uh, when I think of Rose City Rollers, I think this fits 
it quite well because of this really vibrant um, vitamin boost color. So yeah, these are gonna be a gift. The gift receiver asked for orange socks, but I couldn't find any any orange that inspired me. So I asked that um, is it good enough if if the yarn has some orange, and they said yes. So I went with it with it. And this yarn is um, from a Finnish indie dyer, Rova Silmusolmu. Uh, the base is uh, Villa Sokis, which is a fingering weight uh, wool sock yarn. And the colorway is called Dahlia. And oh, this was just so... So nice to knit because of the color and this was my um, work work knit because every now and then in work I have some meetings that I, I just listen to or, or some seminars or webinars that I really don't have to participate and I find it easier to concentrate when my hands are working so I always always need to have some sort of a uh, simple sock or just a simple stockinette project when I work. And so this, um, I need this, I think in, in, in August, just, just at work. But yeah, this took, this took um, 46 grams of yarn. I used 2.20 five millimeter needles. Um, this is like the third pair of rosticy rollers. That's not even enough. This is <laughs> no, I have shown you <laughs> I have shown you quite a lot of rosticy rollers before. So I'm not going I'm not gonna go into great details with this. It's a free pattern. It's a great pattern. I love knitting it. Um, it's good to wear. I like wearing this sort of short socks and my friends love them so I'm gonna keep on knitting this in the future as well. But yeah, I think that that yep that was the last of the FOs. So let's jump right to works in progress. Okay, works in progress. In the last episode, in the June episode, I was uh, I was talking about starting my Celeste pullover in midsummer, and I did. But it was way too hot to knit. So what I did was um, I suffered through the through the color my Celeste pullover. So I need eight centimeters of one by one rib and then I didn't touch this project until mid-August I think. But yeah, <laughs> ever since that I've been working on this like crazy. I'm super excited. I have almost done this beautiful lace lace stitch pattern. I think I have two, maybe four rows left and then I'm ready to do whatever pattern <laughs> tells me to do next. Yeah, I don't usually read my patterns beforehand. I just start to knit and see what comes. <laughs> so I get, uh, I get surprised quite often, but that's fine. So I'm just, I'm super happy with this. Celeste Pullover by Sari Nordlund. This is gonna be my favorite thing to wear and knit and all the things. I love this already. I'm knitting fifth size. I'm using four millimeter needles as 
podcast pattern tells me. The yarn that I'm using is Thin Sheep Wool by Birtingehrana and it's undyed, undyed yarn. It's this beautiful, beautiful mid grey. And I just, I love this. Actually, this, this looks quite big now that I'm looking at it, but I, I think it's gonna be okay. And actually my plan with this is that once I'm done um, with the this intricate stitch pattern and actually when I'm when I'm done separating the sleeves then I'm gonna uh, take this to be my uh, work project because I have some some uh, gift knitting to do that I'm going to be working on on the evenings because I have deadlines and with this I have no deadline other than I really just want <laughs> want to get this done done so I can wear this but yes oh my god it's so beautiful I'm not sure if you can see it because of the light and because of me just moving around all the time oh, but it's so beautiful I, I really I didn't think myself as a lace type of person but I might be <laughs> I might be I just I really love this I can't wear this to be done can't wait for this to be done but yep you're gonna see you're gonna see this quite a few times in the future so happy and then um i got excited from the lace i really trans um i really found the found the lace girl <laughs> within me and uh I've been doing some work on my Midsummer Rose shawl. It looks like nothing with this lighting, but trust me, it's beautiful. Midsummer Rose um, is a really, really complicated lace shawl from Line Magazine issue five. You can see it. You can see it in here. It's a pattern by Lene Tosti. Tosti. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but mm, mm, mm. it's so beautiful. Uh, the yarn that I'm using um, is a, um, I think it was called, I think it was called shawl yarn in the web shop. It's once again finship wool because we know I love it. <laughs> I love a good finship wool um, from this organic farm called Rintalantila. Uh, they don't they they don't carry this carry this yarn base anymore. But I managed to buy a good I think five hundred grams of it. Um, I don't have any any details of the yarn. It, it came without any any great uh, details, you know. And I'm quite sure it's a lace weight yarn. It might be 600 meters or 100 grams or even 800 meters for 100 grams. But anyways, it's a lace weight yarn. The pattern calls for fingering weight yarn. So I am doing more repeats on the repeatable charts than the pattern. Pattern tells you to do because I want this to be big. I want this to be huge. 
<laughs> and I want to use as much of the yarn as I managed to do. Managed to do. I actually don't think that I'm gonna finish this shawl this year because I I wanna I really wanna enjoy knitting this. I I wanna take my time time and I I wanna stop every now and then and and just look at this and <laughs> go wow. So yeah, uh, I have done. Chart A, I did, I think I did nine repeats on the chart B, I've done chart C, and that's a transition chart, and then the next one, chart D, that's repeatable, but I, I really haven't thought of how many times I'm gonna do that just yet, but yeah. This is gonna be so gorgeous in the 10 years time when I'm gonna finish. So yeah, once again, super happy. This is, this has been my weekend, weekend project because it has so many stitches that even one row takes me like 10 minutes to, 10 minutes to do at this stage. Hmm, yeah, two more whips to show you and then I have some pretty exciting sort of personal accomplishment to show you. But enough teasing. <laughs> Let's move on. Mm, uh, in, in the springtime, I think it was February maybe or March. I need two pairs of of these I call these not so fingerless mittens. I need them as gifts. I gifted one pair to my husband and the other pair for my brother. And they were really handy. <laughs> and I realized that I want to need some some for myself as well. And that's what I started to do. So these, these will be not so fingerless mittens for me. Uh, pattern uh, is it's a free pattern for the Pasama. Uh, it's by Anna Johanna. And um, the pattern is for sport weight yarn, and it only has one one size, uh, a men's size. But I just, I took a fingering weight wool yarn and my needles are, I think, 2.25 millimeter needles. So I can just, I don't have to do any other modifications to the pattern. The yarn that I'm using uh, is uh, Shetland wool that I got from Tallinn. There's this beautiful little yarn store called Wool and Woolen. Um, it, uh, the name is also in Estonian, but I really don't know how to pronounce it. So let's go with the English English wor version this time. And um, I have quite a lot of this Shetland wool yarn uh, in, I think, five or six different colors. I have both um, skeins every now and then when I have visited the sh shop store pre-covid naturally <laughs> and um, I was thinking about knitting myself a colorwork pullover or colorwork cardigan but then I realized that um, I'm really not a colorwork colorwork type of person person I'm I'm not gonna wear that one if I need it. So then um, I I was a bit bummed. I had all this gorgeous yarn, not sock yarn, just pure wool yarn, and I didn't know what to do with it. I had like 
one screen per color. And then actually uh, this, I can't remember the name of the color, but this sort of oatmeal, oatmeal color light. <laughs> Just my color. Um, this one I have three skeins, so 300 grams. But the other, other colors I only have 100 grams. And I was struggling to think what I'm gonna need with these. And then I realized that I can make a Vertices Unite shawl. I have... I... I have a need to... Vertices Unite shawls beforehand. But they, they both were gifts. And I really want to make my, one for myself as well. But that's gonna be a... 2022 project i feel like i have quite a lot to do for this year already so that's gonna happen next year and then i i just thought that i want to make these i want to make myself mittens to match that shawl that i'm going to need so these are gonna be my not so fingerless mittens um it's it's just such a quick and fun project to do i really enjoy i love the it, this is really rustic and it smells like it smells like sheep it all, almost makes me sneeze when i knit with this <laughs> and uh, i realized that to a lot of people that's not a good thing but <laughs> i like it <laughs> And as you can see, see, I have already, I've already started to make this, this, this hood <laughs> for the left glove. And um, the original Wasama pattern oh, actually has this sort of stitch detail going that continues throughout the hood. Let's go with hood, but I didn't want to do that. But I did think that um, this uh, this part where I have picked up picked up picked the stitches uh, required something something some sort of detail to make it look better and. I just did six, six rounds of um, twisted rib, and I think it looks it looks quite nice. And when you when you open it, you can find the fit. <laughs> but yeah, this is a quick knit. This one won't, won't take me won't take me long to finish. Just patience. Just patience, because I have quite many things to do right now, and I'm, I'm really, I'm in a zone. I, I just want to start new and new projects. But I try to behave and finish, <laughs> finish some things as well. So, yep. Then to the last, last thing I'm going to show you this time. Um, today is Sunday, and, 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 and on a Friday evening, we decided to watch a movie with my husband from Netflix. Or did we? <laughs> I'm quite sure we did. And um, all, the, all the projects that I have required, required um, you know, brain power just just then and I needed to have some some sort of small project that um, allowed me to focus on the on the movie because not knitting anything while you watch a movie is really not an option no that's something you can't just do so I started I started a simple color work sock this is something that i actually 
um, I started to knit colorwork sock from these two yarns um, in January probably but I lost steam in the middle of the first sock and, and then it just sat in the corner in shame <laughs> for quite a few months and then I realized that I'm not gonna finish them so I started I started a new pair uh, this is a free pattern from Novita it's called Saima socks I'm quite sure that the design is once again from Sari Nordlund and it's it's a really simple color work pattern uh, it's a four one repeat of the pattern takes four rounds so it's really easy to memorize so you really can can watch your movie <laughs> while knitting this <coughs> while knitting this i'm so sorry it's the shetler wool yarn <laughs> Uh, the yarn that I'm using is Drops Fable. Once again, this is quite a uh, quite a drops episode. I'm realizing just now, and uh, it's just both of these, um, these uh, beige one and the blue one are leftovers from other alternates. And I'm I'm really loving these two colors together. I'm really loving these these two colors in this pattern. I think it, this is gonna be a cute pair of socks. I I don't yet have anyone in mind for these socks. I don't think that this will be for me because if if we're being being honest in here i really don't need any new socks so this will go to gift gift basket but yep just some some easy something easy to need while watching tv i'm using 2.5 millimeter double pointed needles why double pointed um, because they were the first ones that I found because I just wanted to start knitting right away I didn't have time <laughs> to look for my chaya goose yeah I can be uh, a bit impatient every now and then but yep that was yeah that was all my whips and now to the last part of the episode we're nearing the end of the episode i promise you guys <laughs> i realized that this this is going to be one long episode and that's why i'm not going to be talking about my future plans future need plans in this episode um, there will be an episode in October, I promise you, <laughs> I do everything I can to make that happen and there will be time to talk about my future plans then. But I wanted to mention, mention this one last thing to you because this is something I'm really proud of, I'm proud of myself. And the thing is that I, um, I got my pattern published. I'm a designer now. <laughs> uh, my pattern was published in the Finnish Taito magazine. They have this open open call for patterns, I think, twice a year. And last fall, I think it was around October or, no or November, I submitted my my pattern and got accepted and the thing <laughs> the, my pride and joy is this odd thing uh, this is a Jurava a 
bomb rock. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. <laughs> uh, it's um yeah, it's meant to be sat on. Uh, you can put it uh, over your wooden chair or you can use it uh, out out when you're you know camping or, or something like that. My dear friend started started uh, studying to be a uh, wilderness guide. Yeah, wilderness guide. And uh, she said that she could actually use one of these when she's camping and hiking. So yeah, um, this is the prototype. Well, no, this is not the prototype. This is the actual one that was featured in the magazine. And I'm going to use this, I think, in my office chair. Because I work long hours and my bum deserves some softness. <laughs> As if it's not soft already. But you know what I mean. So yeah, um, uh, it's not so much of a pattern. Maybe, maybe it's more of a receipt. Receipt. Um, it's um, firstly you need this. You need this rubber rubber rug or this rubber net that you can uh, place under under your rocks so they don't slip slid on the floor and then you just um, use a crochet hook to make knots uh, for this one the magazine uh, gave gave us a color palette to work with, and I used once again I used drops yarn because I wanted I wanted to give affordable options because this takes quite a lot of yarn, and this is just a small <laughs> small balm rug. But um, I have a dream of making making a very long one on top of a, a bench, so that would take take so much yarn, and that's why I wanted to give uh, affordable affordable options on the, uh, of the of yarn that's easily easily accept, you know. <laughs> easy to buy I'm losing my words I'm losing my words right now easy to buy that has a, a big range of colors and I ended up using um, a bulky bulky weight yarn drops snow and then uh, worsted weight yarn drops Nepal and then I'm not sure if you can tell, but I have some drops glitter in gold here as well, because of course your bum rock needs glitter. And the idea is that um, you can uh, you can use scraps. I encourage you to use scraps. I think it, that would be great. Maybe have um, this forever project that uh, every time you. You finish uh, your knit, knit or your crochet or whatever then you take the scraps and use them for this one and eventually in like 10 years time <laughs> you'll have a bomb rock um, that shows you all, all the things you've done you know sort of a memento a, a reminder but yeah it's it's a simple thing and uh, I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm. I'm the first one to come up with idea like this, but but um, really, I. I just. It's. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. I think the first time that 
time that I thought about making something like this was a few years back. And when I when I saw the submission call, what do you call it? Um, I, I just remembered it and, and I thought that this would go well. This would go well um, with the theme, theme of the magazine. So yeah, this is what I did. And um, I hope that, that, that some people get inspiration from it and and do make their own own bomb rocks and I hope to see them on Instagram. So yeah. This was something that I was really nervous <laughs> nervous about. Uh, the magazine came out in, in August and I I was a nervous nervous wreck by then. But all went well and I'm I'm so happy about this. Yeah, I think that's um all um I have to say this time. And it was quite a lot. <laughs> so I think it's time to wrap this up. I'm gonna clean this mess from here and then we're gonna we're gonna cook something. I have some laundry business to do and you know basic Sunday stuff to get ready for the week to come. I hope you enjoyed enjoyed this episode. Feel free to subscribe. I would love to get some comments from the things I do or maybe maybe you want to give me some feedback you know for the for the way I I present and 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 talk about these things um this episode was quite hard for me to film i'm i'm quite nervous because it's been so long since the last episode but i'm glad i did it i really enjoyed this and i hope you did too I hope to see you next time. Enjoy your sweater weather. Enjoy your knitting season. And I'll see you next time. Bye.